Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and this is a brief tutorial on how to make a self-sustaining bathroom so you don't have to keep pumping water in but can still use your shower and your lavatories. Having some kind of bathroom facility is one of the earliest necessities that you'll need in Oxygen Not Included. It's, it's actually the first one because you'll already have oxygen when you start in the game. Your, your duplicates will let you know when they need to use the bathroom because they'll have this little speech bubble above them that will show it has a toilet. The trouble is, if you don't supply a place for them to go to the bathroom, not only does it increase their stress level, but also other bad things happen. Early in the game you can install these outhouses in order for your duplicates to have a place that they can go to the washroom, and you're going to want to pair with that a compost pile so that they can take the contaminated dirt from the outhouse and, and turn it into fertilizer without it going into your storage bins where it adds contamination, uh, contaminated oxygen. But then you have this, this trouble of having to manage the gases that are around it. They're constantly having to go and clean the toilets, which make the duplicates unhappy. Uh, you end up spending extra algae on algae trims around to deal with carbon dioxide, and you have to run an air, de air deodorizer to keep the contaminated oxygen down, which uses up sand and what have you. Uh, so this is what you'll start off with initially, because um, that's all you have access to. But as you go through and complete your research in your plumbing, you'll end up getting access to the laboratory. And you'll also get access to the shower, and that's unlocked in the same, uh, the same research set the sanitation sciences. In here you'll get access to the air deodorizer, the lavatory, and also the shower. The challenge is going to be that your lavatory and the shower both require clean water in order for them to operate, and they both produce contaminated water which you then have to deal with. There are a couple of methods you could use to tackle that. You could funnel that uh, contaminated water into its own, uh, its own collecting reservoir, but you can also create a closed loop in your bathroom that allows you to just pump water in initially to your lavatory and your shower, and then you use a closed loop to keep cleaning the water and sending it back again so you never have to add water to it. At that point, it becomes self-sustaining with the exception of, you ha of having to provide it with power and then having to resupply your water purifier system with sand. I've chosen this top area of my base to be the, the place I'm going to build my bathroom facilities. Now, I generally prefer to do it on two floors so that I can have the water purification on a different section than... Uh, than the shower and the lavatory. However, it's not really necessary. Uh, I just tend to like separating them because it creates an, a little bit of extra, extra piping in order to, to have water in the system stored. And then also it helps me trap the heat away from the shower, which is going to produce a fair amount of heat on its own. I only have six duplicates in my base, so I don't really need a lot of facilities in order to keep them happy. So I can make do with having just one shower and then maybe two lavatories. Now, the, the nice thing about the lavatories is they don't produce contaminated oxygen the way that the outhouse does. So once you have this system in place, it certainly saves a lot of extra, extra gas management and, and gas cleanup. Each of these require a flow of water. Now, this particular base that I'm in did not have a lot of clean water initially. So I kind of pooled it all together toward the bottom in a section that I could work with and place the pump at the lowest level. This pump is currently only producing water up to one level, so we'll need to add... We'll need to add liquid piping up to the level that I need it for for the bathroom. Now, when you're choosing any kind of piping, it will automatically default uh, to a, a particular material. In this case, I keep defaulting to obsidian, but which I have very little of, uh, so I prefer not to do that. Uh, make sure you change it over to something that you have something in more plentiful supply. In my case, that happens to be sandstone, so I'm going to choose that. And I'm simply going to extend my water pipe all the way up to my bathroom level. Now, this seems like a lot of piping, and it is quite a bit. However, we won't have to keep this, this uh, piping in place indefinitely. So once our duplicates build in this piping, we'll have a water supply that goes directly to each of the toilets and the shower. Now each of these items is also going to have a, a dirty water output. So we're going to need to clean that water, and you could actually choose to put it into a reservoir, but I prefer to clean it immediately and then reuse it again automatically. So if we go into refinement, we can go to the water purifier, and I'm going to set that one floor above. From here, we can then add plumbing from, from each of the, the, the lavatories and the shower to go up to the intake portion of the pump. So from the exit pipe... We're going to go up to the intake. And that will allow all the wastewater from each of the three items to feed into the water purifier. The water purifier in turn is going to need to send water back down to the lavatories and the shower so they can reuse it once it's been cleaned. 
I'm going to make a, a simple little connection here. I generally prefer to try to hide things like piping and wiring behind ladders or inside walls and that sort of thing. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to make the shortest connection. Now, the water purifier is also going to need a power source. We now have a close, uh, an essentially closed loop once with one input. So let's get all this built by our duplicants, and then when we turn the system on, we'll be able to pump water into here and get it and get everything operational. Once your bathroom facilities are built, it's really just a matter of pumping water into place so that they can actually make use of the, the lavatories in the shower. Now, the, the lavatories produce the lowest amount of contaminated water. Uh, it's usually just a, one little drop of it uh, every every so often when they each time they flush basically the shower is something that the, the duplicants tend to use most often they seem to each want to take a shower each day which makes sense that's what we tend to do normally anyway uh, and that produces a, a fair amount more of the contaminated water but that'll all flow through our purifier and then once it's purified it'll feed back into the system again so we can continue to use the same water over again once you have water in the system the, the duplicates will just know automatically that these facilities are available for use and when they're ready they'll come up and make use of the shower and or the lavatory The shower produces the wastewater, which will then flow into our purifier. The purifier will take a certain amount to fill it up, and then once it's, it has enough of the contaminated water in it and it has sand as a filtering medium, then it will start to produce clean water that will send back down into the pipeline. This clean water we can then reuse again. Because we already have water stored in the piping, we no longer need the connection that's here in order to keep feeding fresh water from the pump. Instead, what we can do is let the pipeline fill up with water to the point where it's basically self-sustaining, and then we can cut off the connection with the pump so that it no longer has to keep drawing additional water. As you can see, it's now, it's now alternating between taking water from the water purifier and from our initial pump line. So if we go and disconnect the pump line connection, Once they break that connection, it's now a closed system. The duplicates can continue to use the shower. It'll continue to feed the water into the purifier. The purifier will clean it, send it back down into the same loop where it can be reused again, and you no longer have to pump water into it. This gives you the ability to have a, an essentially self-sustaining bathroom. When someone's ready to use the washroom, you'll find the system works similarly for the lavatory. Once the duplicate finishes going to the bathroom and they flush the toilet, the contaminated water flows up the pipe. It will join the flow from the shower into the intake for the, the water purifier pump and then just rejoin the cycle as clean water. Hope you enjoy the tutorial and you can make use of this in your own base. Uh, it's a relatively simple system once you get it set up and it, as I said it's basically self-maintaining with the exception of having to supply sand uh, which is which in the early game is something that you have plenty of materials for. However later in the game you may have to come up with a different system in order to purify the water but you should be able to use a similar mechanism uh, using a, a set of holding tanks to, to turn the contaminated water into steam, condense it, and then resupply it back into the system. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.